Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Simon from BizLearn again. Hi and welcome to a brand new video tutorial of my series NXCAD Secrets. Today I want to talk about deformable parts in terms of what kind of problems we have when assembling deformable parts and how to avoid them. Because I have recognized that many of my customers are not using deformable parts. Well, the feature itself works pretty fine and is, in my opinion, pretty logic. But for many people, it seems a little bit buggy when they implement the formal parts. And today I want to show you why you might think there is a bug behind, but I'm also going to describe the logic behind. However, I have some springs within this assembly, which you can see here. And my target always is to keep them as flexible as possible. Meaning if I move my components like this, the deformable parts has to be recalculated as you can see here. Also here I have another assembly with a deformable bellow. It's four in the sum and after moving my components, those bellows shall be recalculated fine. But first of all, let's have a look at the deformable part creation. Therefore, I have created a completely new file, which is called spring. And let's first of all, create some expressions with the expression editor, control and E, my length, of course which is 100, my diameter, which is 14, the thickness, which is 0.8, and we need the number of windings, which is 10. And before I start creating my curve, I mean the helix, I'm gonna have a look at my datum coordinate system because this is the reason why deformable parts work in some cases and why not. My datum coordinate system, as you can see, is dynamic and positioned on my absolute origin. But in some cases, you have a datum coordinate system which is absolute. And I'm going to create such a absolute coordinate system. You can see it's just a few lines below the dynamic option called absolute and there's no modification possibility in here. The position is equal right now, but when creating a deformable part, it makes a difference, which you will see when we are going to assemble this new spring. So datum coordinate system is absolute. Let's create some curves. I mean, it's just one curve, it's the helix. And let's think about the relation here because specification of Caesars is already done by Siemens and X. And the question now is, is there a relation to my datum coordinate system? No, there is no relation because it is using the absolute origin again. And usually I recommend people to always relate things. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna access the Caesars dialog and relate this to my selected Caesars. I mean, this one. Now we have a relation. You could see it was red. We have a relation now. And you might say now, why do we need the relation here? Well, usually not. You don't really need it because it's not gonna be moved or rotated, however. Well, if you think about rotating your spring afterwards by a datum coordinate system modification, it is possible within the helix function, but not here. And I always recommend people to create a relation between the objects as they do it by use of sketches as well. And also a sketch driven geometry could be defined as a deformable part. So it makes sense to have an understanding of these relations. However, let's modify this helix. We have a diameter here, which is D. We have L divided by W and we have a length in here. Pretty simple to do. Here's my spring. Let's create geometry. By a home more, we got the tube in here, a relation to the helix. Let's create a deformable part. Let's define features, which I'm gonna use to drive my deformable part. Of course, we need all of them. And one expression in that case, it's the length. There is no reference required. Reference makes sense if you are creating deformal tubes, for example, driven by a spline or something, which you will have to select within your assembly to drive your geometry. That's it. Summary is not required, so I'm going to finish this. If you want some modifications in there, well, it's not possible why I double click or something. You really have to delete this and create a new deformal part because once it's been created, it's not possible to access this kind of UDF again. But it's not a real problem because the formal parts are usually that simple, especially springs. Let's assemble this one and move this upwards a little bit to have better access to my geometry. So let's create some constraints like this. It's not deformed yet, but after hitting OK, 
you can see the deformation command appears showing up this L value we've defined for deformation. And you could now create a measurement in here, but it won't be associative. So I'm just gonna cancel this. And within your part navigator, you can see there is no deformable part being defined yet because I've canceled the operation. You can see there is a measurement in here, which I'm gonna delete and create a new one of. It has to be associative, so you have to enable this one and it's a length measurement here from this face to this one. There is no vector required because those faces are parallel and it's gonna be associative, meaning it's gonna be linked within the part navigator. And this is something we can reference now. Just right click, deform, create a new deformation and use the reference method feature parameters, select your measurement, hit okay, hit okay again. And after the calculation here, you have to hit okay again and you can see your deformable part has moved to its absolute origin well you remember we have defined a coordinate system which is absolute and why do we have such a problem because when just defining a position by constraint it's not a problem you have to know that when creating a deformable part you first of all create one component but after defining a deformation you will receive a second object, in this case a solid body. So it is two objects we have, it's two springs. The first one is hidden and the second geometry is displayed and is inserted into the part navigator of the assembly. And we cannot access this, you can just delete it however. So it's really hard to repair. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete this one and modify my spring, but therefore, as I told you, you have to delete this deformable part option. And I'm gonna use my dynamic positioning type and create a new deformation, which I said before is pretty simple to do. It's just a few clicks and you can directly finish this. My spring is now hidden or it's upon here, so it's not constraint proper. Let's have a look at the constraints. You can see those constraints are failing somehow or suppressed. Why I right click, deform, I can create a new deformation and well, of course, linking to my measurement via feature parameters. And you can see after hitting my OK button three times, it was also faster than before and it's pretty much proper calculated so if I move my components like this it will also be updated properly. So the reason was my datum coordinate system which was absolute and this one is a completely new created geometry and of course it's some kind of recalculation so NX decides to use the absolute position therefore when creating this which is pretty pretty normal. When you have such a problem you should think about your coordinate system to be dynamic to be well, movable within the assembly and not to be absolute. Let me now show you the second problem we have when using the formal parts. You can see the bellows here, it's four in the sum and I have them all included within a sub assembly. It's my four bellows and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move some of my components. And what you have to know, I have a lot of wavelengths in here because this is just the first concept design where I'm linking a lot because uh, parameters are changing a lot and it helps me to proceed faster. And you can see my assembly starts dancing. And the problem is my result isn't even better after this movements have stopped. And it's just caused because of my deformable part, especially the entry, which is a new deformed object and a, well, kind of calculation problem because I have some position relations in here by use of constraints and geometric relations concerning the wavelengths and system does not really have a specific way to calculate this proper. What I'm trying to do is just to right click and open my components fully because I think it's because they're not fully loaded and you can see no, it's not. So it is even then not recalculated. I'm just gonna undo these steps and show you my problem. Let's have a look into this assembly here and you can see there are some faces linked which are not in use. Those links are not in use in this case. 
And also here my deformable parts are related to measurements. So I've created a measurement from this face to this. But the problem is these faces, meaning the components which are containing these faces, are not part of this model here. They're part of something else within my assembly. And if you create a measurement like this, I can show you, you will receive a warning. So I select one and another one, and you can see there's an alert. It's just an information, but this causes the problem. So what I did to repair it, I've created linked face instead of a direct relation. And what you gotta do to repair it is pretty simple. Just select all the measurements instead of editing one after the other. You get the feature group listed and you can deselect and select the alternate solutions. Which is in this case pretty simple to do because the linked face is always the first entry here. And my measurements are repaired now. So when I go back to the assembly, I'm going to enable my assembly and move my things around. You can see after the movement, it is well calculated. And within a short amount of time, what you see here is just something you have to update manually. I've made the experience that somehow it works good compared to before by referencing to links. I guess it's caused because of the projected distance. Yes, that's the reason. Because these two work really proper because it's a normal distance measurement and I've created a projected distance in here which requires a third entry, meaning the vector. And I did this unnecessarily, but as you can see, those two objects are not calculated. And what you have to do to repair it is just to, well, just to enter the commands again and deselect something however to kind of recalculate it like this and you can see it is repaired somehow this I would say is a kind of bug I'm, I'm not talking about bugs in this video it's just a normal calculation procedure which is pretty pretty simple to understand if you have a little bit of an experience but this I would say is is not good it could be better it could be updated well it's just can you see this? Just a deselection and selection, which I have to do. But anyway, just to repeat what I'm talking about is, if you have such a situation where you require measurements to different objects within your assembly, it might be better in case of using the formal parts. And I'm not just concerning to this specific case to create links instead of a direct referencing to get all of these pretty cool things working. That's it. I hope you learned something and maybe you have bad experience with the formal parts and you now know how to solve it. Let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. If you want to see more, I'm uploading tons of videos. Subscribe to this channel and you will be updated. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.